thanks to the panel of judges for um, accepting my, you know, selecting my presentation. It's one of the um, Bright Ideas winners. Um, yeah, as the um, title says, I'll be talking about some creative ways to integrate um, Google voice typing into a language lesson. Um, now, so in the in today's presentation, I'll be talking about uh, Google voice typing. What is it? How can you access it? How can you use it? And how can you, um, you know, integrate it into a lesson? And I'll be talking about a little bit of background, you know, um, how the idea came to me uh, back in 2000, late 17, 18. And I'll be talking about the rationale behind each activity that I designed for my students. And um, I'll go through the seven creative and engaging voice typing tasks that I designed um, for my class and for my students and show you how they work and how they, you know, uh, why I designed them and what is the aim to be achieved in each um, creative task. And um, I have some more voice typing activities for um, teachers who are joining the presentation today to take away if they, um, if slides are gonna go up on the um, English History website, uh, there'll be a PDF of the activities and worksheets that you can use. And I'll show you an example from a past and present from one of my students with the, um, with the actual folder and how she started and how she's um, creating voice typing um, journals um, on a day-to-day -day basis almost. And um, then we'll have some time to, you know, ask and answer some questions. And also if we have time, I'm gonna show everyone, um, you know, an example of a voice typing um, sort of Google document. Now, the first thing, Okay. No. Now, first thing is, what is Google voice typing or GVT? So GVT is not, you can't really Google that because I just, you know, I just made it up for myself to make it easier to follow. Um, Google voice typing is basically um, a dictation tool and it was primarily used as a speech to text or speech recognition device um, or method or, um, you know, um, a way of communication. And if you really want to track it down, it goes back um, 100 years back in um, probably 1800s. And, um, you know, when the speech recognition machines were invented, but the most recent example of it has been Amazon and Google and obviously uh, Microsoft uh, Cortana, I think, which is an assistive tool um, for users. And um, it is accessible for free on Google Docs and Google Slides and other Google apps to you know, integrate into uh, whatever purpose you have for your lesson. I put this link down here and it is specifically um, uh, showing you how to you know, navigate through Google voice typing on Google Docs and you can click on it and check it later um, once these slides are up. Now, this is a screenshot of a um, Google Word document. Obviously, the first thing you need to have is a Gmail account and a Google Drive that's connected to that Gmail account. And once you create a file, a, a Google Docs file, as you can see here, a blank document, it takes you to the actual document where you can see, you know, you can start typing, writing, putting pictures, whatever, just like a uh, Word document on a Microsoft Word document. And um, if you go to tools down here, you see voice typing. Um, so first step, go to tools, go to voice typing, and um, you need to activate that in order to be able to use voice typing. Now, a mic appears on the screen. And obviously when you're ready, you click to activate the voice typing or speech recognition machine or the, you know, the brain of Google Docs to take in what you're saying. And um, step four, the mic, you know, turns red, it's time to speak into the mic uh, for Google to transcribe. Well, I know that there are a lot of, um, as I said earlier, there are a lot of devices that you can use to uh, integrate speech recognition into a lesson or into literally anything, you know, um, as an assistive tool. But I'm gonna be talking about Google voice typing in classes. So 
It might sound uh, basic at the beginning, but it's uh, not once I get to the tasks. So yeah, this is just an example. Dictating Google Docs is easy and fun. This is what it's being transcribed via um, Google voice typing, voice recognition. Now I'll go through a little bit of background and um, go through the rationale as well. Uh, back in 2000, late 2017, 2018, um, when I was in Japan, um, I had one day we were spending time with my students in the um, computer lab and I was playing with Google Docs and I thought, well, well what's this? You know, um, Google voice typing. So I started, you know, playing around with it. So, okay, so I gave my students um, on the spot a task to, you know, start using it and see if they can create a journal. And they liked it. And what I started doing at the time was um, asking them to see if it works in Japanese as well. And surprisingly so, it, it worked. So they started talking in Japanese. And sometimes it transcribed as really funny words. And everyone, you know, we spent like 15, 10, 15 minutes on um, talking through the microphones, through the headsets, and creating um, journals with the voice typing. So that's how I started thinking about voice typing in, you know, more in depth and see how I can use it in my um, sort of in my lessons and you know in activities for speaking primarily. And um, so as part of the rationale, I think students can see the language they produce in real time. And that is often a challenge for students because they can't when when they're in class, you know, especially facing the teacher and other students, and especially now that they're doing everything online. Um, it affects their confidence and they think that, you know, even a sentence they're making in, in, in English does not count, you know, they think that, oh, I, I don't speak while they're speaking, they're saying I can speak, but they're actually speaking. Um, so they can't see it, but if they start using um, a voice typing and actually see the language in real time, they'll be encouraged to talk more. And I'll show you examples of how my students continue talking because they see as soon as the language comes out, turns into um, a production of their language ability. Now, um, I think it can help with speech intelligibility. And um, obviously it's because, you know, uh, Google is you know, listening to you and, you know, it's turning through that complex um, process of recognizing the language and turning it into um, text. And as long as it is intelligible, um, it transcribes it. If it's not, obviously it doesn't, or it changes it to a word that's completely, um, you know, sometimes absurd. Um, and uh, I think it can improve pace in speaking. And I designed activities around pace in particular to take the students, you know, um, through a few steps and see if they can manage their, their own pace in um, their speaking tasks. And I'll go through the speaking tasks as examples later on. And um, I think it can be incorporated into um, exam preparation curricula as well. And particularly where speaking is assessed via AI, which is artificial intelligence. Um, and I think nowadays, most of the exams, um, you know, we're going online. Um, I'm not sure about IELTS, how long it's been online. I've been teaching IELTS for years, uh, paper IELTS, but I know that a lot of exams are going online, obviously because of the nature of, um, you know, teaching and learning and testing. So it's a really good, um, um, it's a really good sort of um, facility to use in, in an, an exam preparation situation where you have to, uh, you know, talk through the microphone and on the other side, you have the AI assessing you or immediately giving you feedback on what you're producing. Um, I think it can also be used as an inclusive UDL tool, which is, I don't know how many of you are familiar with UDL, universal design for learning. And I think the inclusive aspect of it has been fairly new. Um, and that is mostly, um, you know, where you use, you know, UDL tools as assistive tools. So as I said earlier in the, um, in the intro to Google voice typing, it was primarily an assistive tool to help students, not just students, people with disabilities, or if you just want to give a voice command instead of typing in something, and um, a very good example of that was um, a student that I had in semester one this year, a couple of months ago, who was injured in a volleyball game. And I suggested, so she was injured in the shoulder. She had to go through surgeries. And um, 
she was right handed she couldn't type in and i suggested that she could use google voice typing to start working you know producing language at least um not writing an exam paper but you know producing the language to be encouraged and to be sort of included that's why i think it is really inclusive because injuries don't mean that you can't talk um, unless you have an injury to your um talking organs and um and i think it is fun and user friendly and i've got examples for that as well that i'll show you later today um and the good thing is that it can be done daily to enhance lifelong learning experience and that is uh this is sort of my obsession with you know my own pedagogy and i really want to make sure that students continue to use different tools in learning and they are not 100 percent um sort of attached to um the classroom context and the teacher they can produce the language whenever they like wherever they like and um you know keep improving and um, producing the language now the first task the aim here is to see language produced in real real time as i said earlier and the task for the, the task type is an impromptu voice typing activity all they need to do is activate the mic, start talking about anything you like. This could be your experience of a good movie, a hobby or, fee or your feelings in that moment. You don't need to write a script before talking. So there are some uh, really important aspects in this. First thing is that it is imp impromptu. You don't have to prepare for it. Um, and the thing is um, you don't have to, students don't have to think about it. They can just activate the microphone and start talking. I know that some teachers do um, voice memos or voice journals. Yes, but the thing is, you can't see the produced language at the end. And a lot of the time, students don't go home and, you know, start transcribing everything on their own. And it takes time, obviously. So this is, I think this is a good idea for them. And my students prefer to do this instead of doing, um, you know, a real task where you have, you know, something, a, a heavier goal to follow. And, um, and they can do this daily as well. Now, the second task is basically in two parts, but they're identical. Um, improving speech intelligibility. It can be done um, as a pronunciation practice, voice typing vocabulary items. Um, I often ask my students to go back to the reading lesson that we do on Monday, read the words they wrote down, or I gave them the vocabulary list um, from the reading and um, you know, read the words out loud and clear to voice type the words. And the other variation is writing sent voice typing sentences. Um, so I ask them to select five short sentences from the text and voice type them to check with the original when they finish. Um, task three, the aim here is improving pace in speaking, uh, voice typing and measuring WPM in speech. I know a lot of students are familiar with WPM in reading and my students like it a lot when I give them a task, you know, a reading text and say, okay, so you've got 700 words. This is the um, average WPM, uh, you know, based on scientific study, you know, 200, 250 or whatever uh, per minute. But when it comes to presentations, they, they are often confused about um, how the number of words sort of translates into um, um, speech speed when they start talking. So, that helped them a lot when they started doing presentations um, in my class. So the task here is to read the text from the reading lesson out loud, begin voice typing and start the stopwatch, record the start and finish the time and the finish time, measure your speech WPM when you finish. And obviously you can match it with a WPM in reading, as in reading and then producing the same language in speech and see um, the word per minute um, pace, both in reading and speaking. Um, the next task is, you know, prep for online speaking exams, speaking about a given prompt where speaking is assessed by AI or, or artificial intelligence. Uh, refer to the speaking prompt or topic given to you by the teacher in three to five minutes. Talk about the topic and voice type. And the good thing here is um, that if you have a large class, a large number of students in, in your class and you have a prompt and you can't really interview students face to face, you can actually see the result and you can give them the time. You can go into the breakout room anytime you like and have a look at the, uh, the amount of language they produce and how on task they are, you know, how 
well they use the vocabulary and how they manage to you know talk about the um, the given prompt. And I often use IELTS prompts for you know exam preparation, which is you know which helps the students with general English as well. Now the next task uh, I've got OP prep as my aim preparation for our presentations or sometimes seminars. I ask them to read the OP scripts and follow the steps. Finish writing, editing your, your script, the OP script, keep a timer next to you, record the time, start reading now and type your voice. You finish, further type words with the words in the script so that they know, you know, again, it, it can be matched with a WPM activity to see how fast um, or how slow you're going and also how um, accurate you're going in terms of um, speaking the words that you put on the script for your oral presentation. And um, activity six, the, the aim here is improving confidence and debating skills, debating pros and cons. So here's a website I often use with my students. I ask them to go to the website, choose a debate topic that interests them, read the pros and cons, find out what you think about the debate topic, are you a pro or a con without writing up a script? And this is again, really important because I want them to gain that confidence to start talking right away. Start talking to your microphone and voice type what you think about the topic. And this can be shared uh, with another classmate or done as a group so that uh, everyone can see on the screen. Now, the aim of the last task here is improving journaling skills. Uh, write a journal at the end of the day about how and when you manage to use the prompt from that day, you can use, you can follow the steps. And the task type here, this is the specific task type on well-being. So I asked them to use the Action for Happiness calendar on a shared Google Drive that we have with my students and choose that specific day of the week. Start making a list of words that you like to use in your diary without writing a script. Again, this is really important because I want them to be you know, intimate and familiar with their own um, speech. Try and talk to talk about your experience with the advice from the happiness calendar. Start reading out loud to type your voice. And again, an optional activity is translating the script into their own languages. How do you feel about the experience of that day? Because this is the topic is on well being. So I really want them to feel, you know, work on the emotions as well as the language. Um, we've got more activities here, as I promised earlier, uh, singing and voice typing. We're going to be doing this tomorrow. I asked them to uh, listen to their or watch their favorite song at home on YouTube. Keep a copy of the link with the captioned version. And uh, this week in class tomorrow, they're going to be sharing the screen to show the Google Doc, mute their Zoom mic and start singing and voice typing. After all the singing is finished, they find the winner whose text has the highest accuracy. Um, I'm just speeding through <laughs> everything to uh, cover the extra tasks as well. This is another one that I haven't done yet. Uh, I paired it with another activity. It's a, it's guiding a tour. So I asked them to um, choose one of the virtual museums or galleries from the list that I'm giving them and ask them to activate the mic and voice type while walking around the place on the virtual museum. And imagine they're a tour guide, and they're talking to people on a tour. And at home, I want them to revise the script and prepare to guide the classmates through the place the week after, next week. Um, sitting dictation, we've had running dictations, but now because we're doing everything online, we're doing everything sitting. So bring to class a short reading on your favorite topic, begin reading the text for the classmates. Your classmates should activate their voice typing mic and dictate what you read for them. So they listen to it and they dictate it. And when everyone finishes, you, the person who came up with the text, checks their dictated text um, against the original that they have. And they repeat steps one to four for other classmates. I've got an example of, um, you know, a voice typing record of one of my students. You can see this, like the list goes on and on. I couldn't just uh, put it in the screenshot and she was, I asked her about, you know, her name being on my presentation and she was actually happy about that. So 
you see, she's done it almost every every day, and she does it really religiously. And I'm so happy for her to be engaged with the activity so well. Um, an example of one of her tasks um, from the 30th of last month, two months ago, the day before yesterday, I went to the restaurant with my grandma and her friends. I went to the restaurant. You see, there is no stop. There is no checking punctuation or whatever because this is spoken command. Uh, the restaurant with them because the restaurant would close. I went there after class, I was a little leg. I'm sure she wasn't leg. Uh, so these are the things that I asked them in, in another stage to start working on. So what was this word that Google missed, for example, and the rest of it. Another example is she just invented this. So we had a lesson on tongue twisters. She went back home and instead of writing a diary, she just practiced tongue twisting putting it on a hey, Google Drive, um, on the uh, Google Docs through Google Voice Typing. Thank you very much for listening. And sorry if I went really quickly, just wanted to make sure I cover all aspects and all parts. And hopefully if we have time, uh, I can show you where to find and activate Google Voice Typing. If you have any questions, this is my email. And um, yeah, I think, time for q a yeah um if you wanted to do the demonstration um you've probably got a minute or two did you oh, want to do great. that yep. yeah sure thank you all right so i'm on a google drive that we use for work for our students so here on the left hand side you see uh new yeah. just need to Go to Google Docs, blank document, yes, create and share. You go to tools, go to voice typing. Oh, no translations, voice typing. Okay, welcome to our lesson on the listening skill today. Listening school, obviously. So, um, you know, it depends on <laughs> where you stop and how you stop. And sometimes this can turn into a really fun activity when students um, stop saying things or use other words to describe, you know, uh, okay, so it doesn't stop unless you stop it here. So, don't want to go on with <laughs> all the language that's being produced. Um, yeah, so they can do it for as long as they want. They can just continue every time they want. You know, they can activate the mic. And um, one thing that I'm going to do probably um, later on this um, semester or next semester is to ask them to activate the voice typing option on a different file and transcribe their own attendance in class. And I think this is going to be um, a lot more useful for them because you can just activate the voice typing here and just uh, minimize your browser and let it listen to you and transcribe what you're saying. And at the end of the lesson, go back to it and see how much you participated in the lesson, how much language you produced for, um, you know, for the activities, for homework and how much you talked in class to everyone. Um, okay, Google, calm down. Uh, <laughs> I think that's, yeah, one thing that's that's important about using it and you know applying it to um, Google Docs is that it doesn't work on other browsers. So it's it's really only um, um, active and available on Google Chrome. Anything that's Google, so um, that's probably the the only disadvantage. But it is available on Google Drive when using Google Google Chrome. Yeah. Okay, thanks, uh, Amin. Yeah. Um, so someone's asked if you can use punctuation commands when voice typing. Um, and that's I think an Claire question. shared the link as well. Mm. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Yeah, so I had this on the slides, but I thought it's going to be, it's going to open the whole world of um, voice typing. Yes, it does. It does actually activate commands uh, with certain, with, in certain ways. Again, you have to be on Google Chrome only. And Google says that this option is only and only available on, um, uh, on Google and in English only. So you can't really use other languages. 
Whereas if you use Google voice typing only, you can use other languages to type in, but not for the commands. So the short answer is yes. The long answer is um, yes. And um, you know, the explanation on how you use it on Google Docs. Right. <laughs> but if, if you go to that link with the, uh, where I put on the slides with the help, Google help, you can see a lot of that in, in more details and see how to you know, um, use it in different ways. Okay, um, Marina's asked if you think it could be adapted for assessment, not just for practice, for example, IELTS prep in speaking. I think, I think yes, as long as it's, it's sort of controlled in a way that the teacher can see and, you know, um, you know, and assess maybe, but again, it depends on how the students are going to do the test at the end. Is it going to be assessed by a computer or is it going to, assess, going to be assessed by um, an examiner like it used to be in the IELTS test, I think, when it was um, done on paper. So um, again, yes, I think yes. And um, again, it encourages the students to, you know, speak better, faster, and and just talk and, you know, engage in, in the activity. Yeah. yeah, I love the self-assessment aspect of it as well the independent learning aspect of it. Um, all right, I mean, well, thank you. There were so many innovative and practical ideas that you shared there with the audience. So thank you very thank you. much for that. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening and thanks for the questions.